Welcome to this unit of the VBA course. And in this unit, I want to start by just showing you how you can actually activate the developer environment. And for this, well, we'll start with Excel, because basically here in this course, I'm talking about how to use VBA in an Excel context. And as you already see, you have to open the menu developer. So it could be that the developer menu is not already activated for you. So if this would be the case, then you would have to select options. We can do this in the Windows version with file and then down here on the left options and in the next part with customized ribbon. And here we see on the right with main tabs, we already activated developer. If it looks like this for you, you have to check this box and you will see here the developer menu. And inside this, well, on the left, we have the part on macros. So if you already worked with macros, well, this should be activated. And on the further left, Visual Basic. So if we click on Visual Basic, this window opens and that's basically our VBA editor. So we can enlarge this. And well, here we have four different parts, four parts about which I want to talk about a bit more in the next few minutes. And we can start on the left, the upper left part here with what is called project or VBA project. That's our project viewer. This tells us basically what is actually opened in Excel, in VBA. This tells me which sheets, which workbooks, or later on with which modules, which user forms I have. It also tells me which additional add-ins are opened. So for example here, aside from my actual VBA project related to this book, I have my solver add-in which is opened and I have some additional functions. Well, this is basically all this window is here. It's just to navigate and perhaps with insert add a few different aspects like user forms, modules, and so forth. However, there's one additional interesting part about this menu, because here, if I select my whole project, I could go to VBA project properties. With the properties, well, the first part, that, that's not really this interesting. This gives me the possibility to change the name, description, stuff like this, but if I switch to protection here, I can actually set a password. So only people who know the password are able to access my code. This might be actually pretty interesting because, well, if we take a look here for the additional functions, those ones I can open. I uh, see the different modules. I could open the different modules. If I go to the solver, I see this one I cannot open. You want to have a password. That's how it would look like if I would actually set a password to my project. So I can keep someone else who is using eventually my code, my file, uses an add in which I program with VBA to see my source code. Okay, that's pretty interesting. But in combination with the properties down here, this allows for a different other aspect as well. So, but first let's change here to the properties window. For this, I'm going to switch with sheet or with workbook. Let's start with sheets because then here I see I have different prop uh, properties which I can actually set. I can switch the name, change the name. I can enable whether calculation should happen automatically or only manually. And I have additional other stuff. The in most interesting aspect, in my opinion, is the last one. That's the visibility. What does this mean? Well, if it's visible, see here I have three options. If it's visible, that's like the typical aspect we would expect. We see our sheet in the normal workbook. Then we can hide this. That's the same thing you might learn about if you take a look at an Excel course on how to hide your worksheets. So someone else won't directly see what's written. Well, the problem is he could just go to the lower part, right click, show all worksheets. 
and well, then basically this was for nothing. If you want to really hide this, you could select here and only in VBA, very hidden. So this is a property which can be changed here, but not in Excel itself. So whenever you go in Excel on show all worksheets and it's very hidden, it won't be shown. So you have to switch this back here. Okay, and the interesting part, you could combine this with a password for your VBA project. So only the guys who actually know the password can make this specific worksheet visible again. So that's a pretty neat thing. If you really want to hide some Excel parts, some data or stuff like this in your workbook. Okay, so this is a bit on the worksheets. Workbook has a few more additional properties, in particular here in the lower part, I can also set a password for opening my workbook. Could do this in the save dialog as well, but I could do this here if I want to. Then additional aspects which I can set, change if I want to. But basically that's all I want to mention at the moment here on properties. So whatever object I select, here I only have sheets and workbook, but later on, perhaps if I work with user forms, I can change the properties of the user forms, of the objects in the user form. For all of this, I'm going to use the properties window here in the lower left. Okay, that's the first two. The next one, that's more or less the open space here on the right. So if I double click, for example, this workbook, this opens my coding window. So here in the large empty area, I can write my programs, my procedures, my functions, stuff like this. And I have two parts up here, two drop down menus with declarations. At the moment, there's nothing here. But if I were to add some kind of function, it's displayed here. So this right drop down list gives me all the possible functions. Okay, so much for the right one. What's the left one for? Well, Usually it reads general. If I go here, I get workbook or if I go to sheets, worksheet functions. Workbook functions. Ah, sorry, I'm still with worksheet. Workbook functions. That's for example, what happens if the workbook is opened or if it's saved, if it's closed. So I can react to specific actions, specific events, which influence the state of my workbook. And well, comparatively, I can do similar things for worksheets. Here, uh, for example, different things are selected. If something is changed in a workbook, if it's activate a uh, worksheet, if it's activated, so I can select what happens if someone makes changes. I could deactivate changes, for example. This is more like, like protect the content from an Excel perspective. And I can all of this stuff modify on my own. So those are the things which the left and the right drop-down menus are relevant for. And then this only leaves me with the part up here. So basically my menu and the most important aspects here in this list. Well, for us, the three most important ones are those three here. That's the run sub or user form, break and reset. So basically it means if you want to start some kind of program, if I want to start this, I could press this run sub button. If it runs and I want to stop at some point during the execution, I can use the break part, but that's like a pause button. So doesn't stop this totally, it just holds this, puts this on hold. And I can continue by pressing run again. If I press here, reset, just stops this function, goes back to zero. Okay, and this then already is all there is. I could tell you about the general outlook of this, well, programmer user interface. And well, if you want to see more on this course, feel free to visit the rest of the course or take a look at the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.